Hello, and welcome to the Monster Painter. This week, I build a ramshackle house. All right, we are returning to the big pile of Renedra terrain that I acquired with the help of a sudden currency discount offered up by a British Prime Minister. Oh, what was her name? Oh, I've already forgotten. Oh well, I guess she was just a footnote. This fine kit is manufactured in Wisbeck, England. Wisbeck, England? Wisbeck, England. Uh, and we get a pile of four sprues and, most importantly, some very helpful assembly instructions. I love to see in assembly instructions. Okay, time to get at it then. Of course, the first step is obviously to clip off the sprues. This kit does not have a lot of parts and none of the parts are really very samey. So I'm going to clip it all off and get everything ready for assembly all at once rather than uh, systematically clipping and building. All right, I'm going to use some Army Painter plastic glue to assemble this kit. Uh, this will give the model a nice, strong, stable bond and yield a durable finished product. And I have to say, this is a really well-designed kit. The parts came off the sprues lickety-split, they required only a minimal amount of cleanup, and between the design of the parts and the clarity of the instructions, the assembly of this thing was an absolute breeze and a pleasure to put together. I must say I really appreciate this clear straightforward design. When I assemble uh, Games Workshop kits, which granted are much more elaborate, there are always moments of panic and terror, whether the muddy instructions have led me astray or I simply can't make heads or tails of the thing. Uh, it can be an emotional roller coaster, but not with this kit. Clear, straightforward instructions and nothing too fancy leads to an easygoing and satisfying build. Okay, with our ramshackle house all assembled, it is time to get it primed. I use acrylic gesso as always, and uh, next up is to put the base coat of dark brown on. In this case, it's a mad mixture I whipped up and then promptly forgot the formula. Thankfully, dark brown is dark brown. And it is on to painting this dilapidated house up. The first step is to give it, a, give it a thorough dry brushing layer of bronze yellow, which is a nice warm yellow brown color that really conveys woodenness. And since this is a wooden structure, that's how we're gonna go. Now, uh, Renedra bills itself as a producer of generic terrain. And while that might be true, as this building is clearly not tied to any IP or branded property, it is full of character and flavor. It does, it very effectively does what good terrain is supposed to do, which is to evoke a setting on the tabletop. And so while it's not Warhammer 40k terrain, it definitely does not feel like something that is generic. On to the next step, another layer of dry brushing. This time with a warm light gray color. I was a bit out of control during this session, so I don't really recall the mixture that I used. It's probably titanium white, Mars black, some raw umber, some bronze yellow, and something else. Anyway, the point of this light taupey colored gray is to give these timbers the weathered, sun-bleached look of an old, neglected building. This uh, process brings to mind the silly madness of taking a gray model priming it, and then very carefully painting it a lovely color of gray. Well, no one ever said this hobby makes any sense at all. Now to add a bit of color to this building. Since the chimney is not made out of old sun-bleached timbers, it will have to be painted up a different color. To this end, I am applying a layer of iron oxide red and thus giving it the classic red brick chimney look for our old ramshackled structure. Of course, a straight layer of iron oxide red would be much too bright and lively for a building in such a condition. So I am adding a dry brush layer of a dulled up muddy mixture of of iron oxide red with a bit of titanium white and a touch of Mars black 
This will weather those bricks and make the chimney look consistent with the rest of the building. The final step in the project is a black wash. This will bring out some of the details, hide the spots where I overworked the dry brushing, as well as add a weathered, dirty look to our old dilapidated building. I can see a lot of potential uses for this piece of terrain. Obviously it would work well in uh, historic games, particularly well in American Civil War games. I think it would also be great for weird west adventures such as Dracula's America. I will be using it in my games of Frostgrave. The frozen city of Old Felstad is a big place and while it is dominated by high fantasy towers and crazy wizard architecture, there is no reason why parts of the haunted ruins couldn't include more naturalistic ruined timber structures such as this one. I grew up in Alberta, Canada, a place that was only settled by Europeans in the late 19th century and was in fact terra incognito as late as 1801. So growing up, the only ruins I ever experienced were ones like this one. So for me at least, this thing fits right into the icy ruins of Frostgrave. So this kit also included a couple of nice extras, including a pair of small bowls, a broken wagon wheel, a wonderful ladder, this awesome chair, and a little lantern that I've already lost somewhere. Oh well, I lose things sometimes. And let's take a look at the final product. The house looks a lovely weathered old gray, and yeah, it's a prettier, nicer, different gray than it started out with, so I'm happy about that. And now let's take a look at it in its natural habitat. Obviously, that's a zombie apocalypse. Oh dear. Uh oh. Oh, oh well. Tough break, guy. All right, on to the monster fight. And here we have three badass vintage orcs. They were made for fighting, and they were made for winning. And the three boys will be facing a monster too hideous to imagine. They are fighting the bizarre and unknowable Eye Stalker. What a truly disgusting horror. Let's see who wins. It looks like we have a winner. Now let's see how this thing plays out. All right, get them, boys. I'll get you. You are going to beat me. Wow, that was fun. And we have a winner. The Eye Stalker is victorious. Okay, Eye Stalker, you can now return to your home plane. Next week, the Monster Painter goes on a field trip to the Sword and Brush Convention. <laughs> Remember to like. Uh oh. Do subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. Monster Painter.